Hello friends, this video on equilibrium part 27 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched all the previous parts. So as I told, there are a lot of definitions of acid and base. So the first good definition for acid came by Arrhenius. So he told that, according to him, the acid is a substance which dissociate in water to give H plus ion. And the base are the one which produce OH minus ion. So his definition was H plus ion, OH minus ion. The one which gives H plus is acid, one which gives OH minus is base. That was his definition of acid and base. It was a very popular definition and the, the, the reactions are like this. You have acid HX, it will give H plus and X minus. H plus, it gives the acid. And it also told that H plus is very reactive, right? So it, it forms hydrogen ions. So H plus actually is very reactive. It will react with water to form H3 plus ions. So this is the reaction actually. So normally HX in E acid with water, it gives hydrogen ions and X minus. That's the actual thing actually happens. But uh, H3O plus, if you remove uh, water from that, it becomes H plus. This is the theoretical and this is what happens actually. Right? So that was his definition. Similarly for base, if you see MOH is a base which in, in water gives M plus and OH minus ions. Right? And if you see the hydroxyl line which we have got, it also exists in the hydrated form of the solution. But there is a demerit for this because if you see everywhere this guy is talking about aqueous solution. Right? Aqueous solution. Aqueous solution. But this definition that means is applicable only for aqueous solution. The demerit for this that this is applicable only for aqueous solution and it doesn't account for the obesity of substance like ammonia. Because ammonia is something which will not produce hydroxyl ion, but still it is base. It will convert the, the litmus paper to blue. But with this definition, it is very difficult to say whether ammonia is acid or base because ammonia is not in OH minus ions. So his definition was kind of not very uh, concrete. Maybe in 98% of the case, this definition is correct because most of the thing we use uh, the aqueous solution for chemistry reaction. But that is not true. There are some reactions where we don't have aqueous things, and there are some reactions which doesn't uh, gives OH minus ion, for example, ammonia, and that's still a base. So this definition was not that great. Then came uh, Bronson and Laurie. There are two people, and they gave the definition of acid and base. They told that acid is a substance that is capable of donating H plus ions and base are substance which is capable of accepting H plus ions. So the OH minus ion was the issue there earlier if you see the ammonia case. So they removed the OH minus ion, they ignored the OH minus ion part. What now they are saying is something which can accept H plus is base, something which can give H plus, so acid if you see will give H plus and base if you see will take H plus. That is what they told. Acid will give H plus, base will give H plus, base will take H plus. So with this ammonia can easily be said as base because ammonia in water give NH4 plus ion and OH minus ion, right? This guy is uh, ammonia is taking H plus, right? NH3 became NH4 plus, so it is a base. Correct. And with this Bronson and Lowry acid and base, the concept of conjugate acid and base also came. So what is conjugate acid and base? If you see, uh, if you see the base, with this base, I got one conjugate acid, right? So with the base, I got one conjugate acid and it differs only by H plus ion, if you see, right? That's why I say the acid base pair that differs only by one proton that is H plus ion is called conjugate acid base pair. So if you see NH3 and NH4 plus is a acid base pair. Here also if you see H2O and OH minus ion they differ only by H plus. So they are also acid base conjugate acid base pair. Right? So this acid will be conjugate base. Correct? Base conjugate acid. So on base if you add H plus it becomes conjugate acid. In acid, 
you subtract h plus, it becomes conjugate base. So the rule is pretty simple. The difference is only h plus ion, but on base, if you add h plus, then only this guy is having potential to give h plus, right? And then it will become acid. See, acid is something I told, which is potential to give h plus ion, right? So in base, if you are giving h plus, then only whatever compound you get, example NS3. I gave uh, it added, uh, gave, I gave H plus, I mean this the NH3 got one H plus, it becomes NH4 plus. Now NH4 plus is not capable of giving H plus, maybe it may give, right? If you talk about the reverse reaction, NH4 plus is becoming NH3, right? So NH4 plus, if you just flip this side, NH4 plus is giving NH3, that means NH4 plus is a acid here because acid is something which gives a proton. Correct. So NH4 plus is a acid here. OH minus if you see the base because OH minus is something which will accept one proton to get to become water. So if you see the reaction from the flip side, you'll see that in NH3 takes H plus becomes NH4 plus and from here NH4 plus gives H plus to gives NH3. So if you see from this side NH3 is a base, if you see from this side NH4 plus is an acid. So they are called conjugate acid because they differ only by H plus. But from a base, if you want to make conjugate acid, you have to give H plus ion, add H plus ion. From acid, if you want to make conjugate base, you have to remove this ion. We'll discuss more about this in the next two slides, right? So OH minus is called conjugate base of H2O and NH4 plus is called conjugate base of NH3, as I told you. And also, uh, if this acid is a strong acid, then the conjugate base is a weak base. And if the base is strong right the conjugate acid is a weak so it's, it's a vice versa always so for a strong acid the conjugate base is weak for a weak acid the conjugate base is strong okay. because i'll tell you NH3 is a weak base somehow it got H plus it becomes NH4 but this guy if you see the reverse reaction this guy will be eager to give one H plus and becomes NS3 again. So this guy is more eager to give H plus, right? So this guy is less eager to take H plus, but this guy is more eager to give H plus because NS3 is a little stable thing, right? So it's a weak one. This guy is weak, this guy is less eager to give, take one H plus. So it's a weak base. But this guy is more eager to give H plus back to the system. So this guy is a strong acid. Let's take uh, more about conjugate acid uh, base pair. So as I told, they differ only by H plus sign. So in acid, if you acid will anyway give H plus, let's let H give H plus. So what you get is conjugate base. Base will obviously take H plus, and then it will become conjugate acid, right? And if my it is strong, this becomes weak. If this is weak, this becomes strong. Correct. Hope you understand. It differs only by H plus ion and the way you look is, for example, NSC is a weak base. It is not eager to take H plus but somehow it took H plus. Now this becomes a conjugate acid and this guy will be more eager to give H plus back. So this becomes strong acid. Okay. Let's take one question. What does it mean by conjugate acid base pair? We just discussed. Right, acid base pair that differs by H plus is called conjugate acid base pair. And we define the conjugate acid of base for this following species HNO2. So HNO2 can take proton or can give protons. I think if you give proton, it becomes NO2 minus. CN minus, there is no way it can give proton, it has to take proton. Right, plus this guy is minus. Then we have HClO4. This guy also will give uh, this is acid, I know. 
it will become zero for the virus. F minus it can never give proton because there is no proton here, so it will add one proton. OH minus we know that it generally take one H plus to become H2O. Right? Then we have CO3 minus 2. Also, it can't uh, give any proton because there is no proton here. So this become SCO3 minus. S2 minus also it doesn't have any proton, so it will take one proton, this becomes H minus. Correct. This is how you create acid base conjugate pair. So the question says we have to find a conjugate base for these acids. So to find conjugate base for the acid, what to do? You take the acid, subtract H plus ions, you get conjugate base. Correct? That's what we discussed. You take acid, you subtract H plus ion, you get conjugate base. So you have HF, you subtract H plus ion, you get F minus. You have S2SO4, you subtract H plus, you get HSO4 minus. You have HCO3 minus. You subtract H plus, you get CO3 2 minus. These are my conjugate. Easy one. Find the conjugate acid for the space. So I was told for your base, it takes H plus ion, you get conjugate acid. Correct. So NH2 minus, you add on H plus ion, this becomes NH3. NH3, you add one H plus ion, it becomes NH4 plus. HCO minus, you add H plus ion, it becomes HCOH. These are my conjugate. Okay. The species H2O, HCO3 minus, HCO4 minus, NH3 can act both as acid and base. Because it can actually, it can lose proton to gain proton. Find the corresponding acid in these both. So, so I have, uh, uh, let me write like this. This is my conjugate acid and this is my conjugate base. Right? Let me draw it like this. And I have, I write all these values here as 2 HCO3 minus HSO4 minus and NH3. So to give acid, to create acid, conjugate acid, what do you do? You have a base, you add H plus ion, you get conjugate acid. Right? So you add H plus ion. So it adds H plus ion. H3O, H3O plus will become, this will become H2CO3. I'm just adding H plus ion, this will become H2SO4, and this will become NH4 plus. Let's take con con conjugate base, you have to subtract H plus ion, correct? Subtract H plus ion from H2O, this becomes OH minus ion. Subtract H plus ion from this, it becomes CO3 2 minus. Subtract H plus from H. SO4 minus becomes SO4 2 minus NH3 you subtract H plus and becomes NH2 minus. So if you see, same guys acting as acid so, and acting as base. Remember, if you want to form conjugate acid, you have to supply H plus to make it acid. So it becomes conjugate acid. If you want to make it conjugate base, take out H plus to make it conjugate. Now the question that comes to our mind is, water is it acid or base? It's a very good question actually in chemistry. The answer is, water is both acid and base. We'll see how. See, water acts as, as base because it accepts proton. See, this water, this is HCl, it becomes s 3 plus. Water has taken one proton from H plus, became s 3 plus. So water is a base. Water acts as acid also because it gives proton. For example, if you react water with ammonia, this becomes NH4 plus. That means water has given one proton to NH3 and becomes O minus H minus. 
So water is both acid and base. I'll just repeat once again. So if water, you react water with a strong acid, water behaves like a base. If you react water with a strong base or a base, water behaves like acid. For example, if you react water with ammonia, which is a base, water acts like an acid and loses proton, it becomes OH minus, conjugate base. Water, when you react with HCl acid, it, it gives proton to, I mean it takes proton from H plus HCl, it becomes H3O plus and then it acts as base. So it's very funny uh, chemical actually water, it is both acid and base. And that's why it is actually neutral, we'll talk about pH scale and all, we'll talk why it is uh, neutral. So after Arrhenius, we got uh, Laurin, Dawson, then Le Levis also, Levis also gave the concept of acid and base. So in 1923, uh, Levis defined acid as species which are electron prayer acceptor and the base are the one which donates electron pair. Please note for this chapter, we'll be focusing more on the uh, Bronsted and Laurie acid base where it accepts H plus and OH uh, or minus. We'll not be focusing more on uh, this Levis acid and base, but since we are uh, studying the history of acid and base, we have covered this. Uh, the Levis uh, acid is something which accepts electron pair and the base is something which donates electron pair. And this was done because there was a demerit for uh, the Bronson and Lowry acid base because BF3, if you see, doesn't have any proton at all, but still acts as acid. Because it reacts with ammonia and it accepts the lone pair of electron. This is something which is an acid, but the, the earlier definitions of acid could not prove it is acid. One of the litmus paper was proving it is an acid. But the definitions were the early definitions were not able to prove it. So if you see this is the BF3 and this is NS3, it takes the lone pair becomes this. So it accepts the electron pair. We'll take some example of Levis acid and base. We will classify the species into uh, Levis acid and base and so how this reacts with. So for example, OH minus is what? It's base. Why? Because OH minus will take with H plus to becomes H2. F minus. It also is a base. Why base? Because F minus will also, even if you react with BF3, will form BF4 minus. If you react with H plus, becomes H HF. H plus is the acid. Right? Because if you react H plus to the OH minus, becomes H2. BCL3, the tricky part. This guy is the acid, like uh, BF3, because BCL3 plus NH3, if you see how it works, is this becomes H3 and BCL. It accepts the electron pair. So this the Levis acid is the best uh, definition for acid and base. But for our chapter, will not be uh, using this definition. We will be uh, taking the earlier definition. Let's take some questions now. Which of the followings are uh, Levis acid? So H two is neutral. BF three is acid. H plus is acid. NH4 plus is also acid because it will donate up H plus ions. Now we will take ionization of acid and base. So we have already discussed this actually. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to Watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.